This week on the Green Left News Podcast, the world rallies for Palestine, traditional owners resist coal and gas mining, and justice for Cleveland Dodd. This podcast was recorded on stolen land. Green Left is committed to supporting struggles for First Nations justice. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Isaac Nellist and today I'm joined by Green Left contributor Anissa. Welcome. Hi Isaac, lovely to be here. So the rallies for Palestine are continuing across the country with tens of thousands coming out to demand an end to Israel's bombardment of Gaza and its brutal occupation of Palestine. And there's been enormous rallies of about 30,000 people in Gaddy or Sydney and Nam, Melbourne, as well as thousands turning out in Mianjin, uh, Brisbane, and Corneyota, Adelaide. There have also been significant rallies in Mullabimba, Newcastle, and Tharawal, Wollongong, and Geelong. Uh, mm-hmm. Chants of shame, shame, Albanese are common, calling out Labour's shameful support for Israel. Aside from the huge and inspiring rallies in the CBD, there have been countless smaller rallies and gatherings happening all over the place. One of these was the Northern Suburbs Speak Out for Palestine held in Coburg in Nam on October 19th. The speakout was called by Marybeck councillors Sue Bolton and Monica Hart at the request of local residents. Up to 1,000 people joined the community rally as passing motorists tooted their horns in support. Another powerful speakout in Gaddy was by hundreds of health workers at Liverpool Hospital and the surrounding area who gathered on October 18 to protest the Israeli bombing of the Al Ali Arab Hospital in Gaza, in which 500 people were killed. Nurses and doctors addressed the protest and read a moving letter urging the Australian Medical Association to speak out. A forum held at the University of Sydney titled Gaza in Context, the Duty of Solidarity in the West was joined by 200 people on October 20th. It was hosted by Sydney staff for Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, or BDS. Palestinian, Jewish and other speakers talked about the history of the Gaza conflict, Israel's apartheid laws and the importance of the BDS campaign. And Canterbury Bankstown City Council, which is the largest council in Australia, passed a motion of solidarity with the people of Gaza on October 24 and is now flying the Palestinian flag over the council offices until a ceasefire is declared. So Canterbury Bankstown has a population of more than half a million people and the motion was adopted unanimously by councillors. And Labour councillor Koda Saleh, who moved the motion, told Green Left he was proud of the decision. He said, not only is the Canterbury Banks Town uh, Council the capital of multiculturalism in Australia, it's the capital of humanity. It's the first council in the country to stand with Palestine, but hopefully not the last. On October 25th in Nam, a black and Palestinian solidarity rally was held, which sought to build the links between the fight for First Nations sovereignty and a free Palestine. The lead banner called for anti-colonial action from Nam to Gaza. It has been awesome to see the ongoing solidarity between First Nations and Palestinian people. In Gadi on October 26th, there was a Gadigal to Gaza resistance until liberation discussion with First Nations and Palestinian activists. And if you want to join some of these upcoming rallies, forums and speakouts for Palestine, we are keeping the Green Left activist calendar as updated as possible. And if you're organizing an event or notice that one is missing from the list, you can easily use the add event feature so we can get it on the calendar as soon as possible. So head to greenleft.org.au forward slash events to find out what is happening near you. The family and friends of a black teenager who committed suicide in the notorious Unit 18 of Western Australia's Banksia Hill Detention Centre told the WA government that the place is a baby killer's room. They said there are far better ways of dealing with youth misdemeanours than locking them up. Cleveland Dodd was only 16 years old and being held in custody in the adult section of the Casuarina Maximum Security Prison, despite not being convicted of any crime. He was found unresponsive in his cell on October 13 and taken to hospital, where he died days later. Stop Deaths in Custody campaigner Megan Krakauer told a candlelight vigil with his family and friends that the department had been warned, the politicians had been warned, that something like this could potentially happen, but it fell on deaf ears. 
The family told NITV they would not rest until they get justice. And the recommendations of the 1991 Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody have still not been implemented. Senior Jikilarubu Elder Molly Munkara is one of five elders who have asked Federal Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek to urgently intervene to stop Santos from destroying Tiwi cultural heritage. Munkara said her sea country is at immediate risk from the oil and gas giant's pipeline construction for its Barossa gas project. She said, The seabed is part of the country that I must speak for and protect. If Santos puts that pipeline where it has said, it will destroy our sacred sites and our ancient burial grounds. Santos announced it intends to begin work on the pipeline this week. Elders are calling on Plibersek to make a special declaration under the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Heritage Protection Act to prevent serious and immediate harm to significant underwater cultural sites. Meanwhile, another gas project in the Northern Territory is being challenged by traditional owners and climate activists. The NT Chief Minister Natasha Files is claiming that the 1,500 hectare Middle Arm gas project is a clean energy investment that would include a world-class carbon capture and storage facility. But on October 24, the Australian Institute's Mark Og busted the so-called green credentials of the project. He pointed out that carbon capture and storage technology has repeatedly failed to do what it's supposed to do and said that expanding fossil fuel projects is playing a huge role in destroying the climate. In Gadi, on October 18th, hundreds rallied outside New South Wales Parliament to call on Labor not to continue funding Origin Energy, the owner of Iraring Power Station in New South Wales. The protest was supported by the Nature Conservation Council, Sydney Climate Coalition, Solar Citizens, Healthy Futures and Sydney Knitting Nanas and Friends. They want Labor to drop its plan to subsidise the power station. And an anti-war forum on October 22 discussed the Australia-United States military alliance and the complexities of building an anti-war movement at Redfern Town Hall. The forum was organised by the Sydney Anti-Orcus Coalition and heard from groups including the Australian Anti-Bases Campaign Coalition, Stop Orcus WA, the Independent and Peaceful Australia Network, Friends of the Earth, Wollongong Against War and Nukes, and others including First Nations and Palestinian activists, unionists and long-term anti-war activists who detailed their experiences resisting the Vietnam War, Iraq War and the invasion of Afghanistan. More than 100 people joined a rally to defend public housing at the Collingwood Estate in Nam on October 21st. The rally opposed state government's plan to demolish 44 public housing towers in Victoria. Yarra City Councillors Stephen Jolly, Michael Glynatsis and Bridget O'Brien initiated the rally in response to the tower demolition announcement. Speakers included Robbie Thorpe from the Krautungalung tribe of the Gunai Nation, Greens leader Adam Bant, Rachel Evans from Action for Public Housing and Public Housing Tenants, Valentina Frolova, Aisha Abdi and Catherine Ceballos. And now let's hear what is happening around the world. More than 100,000 people joined a mass mobilization in Rome on October 7th, organized by the Italian General Confederation of Labor and a hundred other trade union and civil society organizations. The enormous rally was called the Main Road Together with the Constitution and was in support of workers' rights, social justice, health, education, peace, the environment, and equality. It was held on the 75th anniversary of the Italian Constitution's first article, that Italy is a democratic republic founded on labour. The constitution was born out of the anti-fascist resistance during World War II and has long been the target of right-wing assault, including from the current Giorgia Maloney far-right government. Over the past year, the Maloney government has sped up the war on these rights, cutting spending on public health and education, cutting wages and reducing taxes on profits. Italian anti-capitalist left leader Franco Terrigliato called the rally a big success, the likes of which have not been seen for many years. The movement is now working towards a general strike to continue the pressure for change. Healthcare workers in the US won a tentative agreement with industry giant Kaiser Permanente on October 13th for a 21% pay rise over four years and improvements to working conditions following their historic three-day strike. 
Tens of thousands of workers, including nurses, nurses' aides, optometry and pharmacy technicians, went on strike across the country from October 4th to 6th, with many patients joining picket lines. Kaiser employs more than 300,000 healthcare workers across the country. The largest union involved in the strike was the Services Employees International Union, United Healthcare Workers West, which represents 85,000 members. Along with pay rises, workers sought protections against subcontracting and outsourcing, better performance sharing bonuses, improved retiree medical plans and unionisation rights. The win comes amidst a surge in union organising and action, including the United Auto Workers Strike and Hollywood Writers and Actors Strikes. And as Israel intensifies its bombing of Gaza, including targeting hospitals and civilians fleeing its genocidal attacks, Cubans have reaffirmed their solidarity with the Palestinian people and pledged to redouble their efforts in, quote, condemning the crimes that Israel continues to commit against a nation defending its legitimate rights. The Cuban Institute of Friendship with the Peoples and the Cuban Arab Friendship Association released a joint statement that said, we extend our solidarity and unconditional support to our Palestinian brothers and sisters whose cause we defend as our own. The statement endorsed the Cuban Foreign Ministry's stance in seeking a just and lasting solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict based on the creation of two states. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel Bermudez released a statement on X, formerly Twitter, on October 18, condemning in the strongest terms Israel's bombing of the Al-Ahi Hospital in Gaza, which killed and injured hundreds of civilians saying, quote, we demand an immediate ceasefire and an end to these flagrant violations of international humanitarian law. It has been incredible to see millions of people around the world joining protests in solidarity with Palestine and resisting Israel's attacks. Some countries have tried to shut down and repress protests, but have mostly been unable to stop tens of thousands from marching in major cities. We have collected photos from around the world of these rallies online, including protests in the U.S., India, Indonesia, Italy, Yemen, Malaysia, Britain, Brazil, Pakistan, and more are being added over time. So check out those photos on the Greenleft website and send in your photos from Palestine rallies to photos at greenleft.org.au. Yeah, and you can read more about all of these stories that we've talked about today, plus videos, detailed analysis, and book and music reviews at greenleft.org.au. Plus, you can find details of upcoming activist events at the Greenleft calendar. Head to greenleft.org.au forward slash events for all upcoming protests, rallies, forums, performance nights, and more. And send in your events to be added to the calendar using the Add Event menu. Yeah, one of the most exciting events coming up soon is Greenleft's annual comedy debate on November 10 in Nam at Fitzroy Town Hall. This year's topic is We Should Welcome Our New AI Overlords. And we're excited to announce that the night will be hosted by the incredible Tom Ballard, plus a great group of comedians, including Fiona Scott Norman, Hell Child, Jack Brady, Nikki Barry, Sean Bedlam, and Shira Lee Hood. Get your tickets now at the link in the description or head to Try Booking... (laughs) Try Booking. Get your tickets now at the link in the description or head to trybooking.com before they sell out. If you have enjoyed this podcast, you can become a Green Left supporter today from $5 a month and donate to our 2023 Fighting Fund to help us continue reporting on workers, climate and social justice movements. Go to greenleft.org.au forward slash support to help us out. Your support is really appreciated. And just a shout out to our editor, Sean, or at Little Archer Beats, who uh, does the music and editing for this podcast. And remember to follow Green Left on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads and TikToks for the latest news and analysis. Thanks for listening.